Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 103, featuring Mallory Malloy Co. Welcome back, everybody. It's Chris Murray here, your host of Child Care Rockstar Radio, and I'm thrilled to welcome into today's podcast uh, an incredible child care rock star in her own right, Mallory Malloy Co. She's the owner and founder of Inheritance Academy in Baltimore, Maryland. And she has been doing child care uh, and living and breathing it since she was 14 years old. <laughs> She's an amazing lady, really an inspiration to so many other women in particular uh, in this field, <clears throat> women of color in particular, and she's just got an amazing brand. Uh, she is just an incredible uh, spirit and just a, a wonderful mother of three and an entrepreneur in her own right. In this episode, we talk about her core values-driven approach to leadership and to her team and her organization, and really her core values, um, which spell an acronym of SEED, <clears throat> and we talk about that in depth in this episode are also part of her branding. And I think what you'll learn from this episode is how cultural components that help you retain staff and attract amazing team members also help you with your marketing and your brand and help you attract and retain parents. And so really um, it's a two for one approach because everything that you're doing to build out your culture and um, drive towards a school of excellence and a culture of empowerment and positivity also uh, really plays a huge role in attracting parents and retaining families and children into your program. So we talk all about that in this episode and there's a lot of ideas that you can model that Mallory shares, including her events focus and how she does really, really cool, fun, unique events for children and the parents love them. And by doing those events and getting great photos, you can use those in your social media and attract more uh, families who want to be in a culture of what you offer and who are a fit to your organization and teachers and candidates who are a fit to your organization. So we have, we talk about hiring strategies, onboarding and training, uh, her specific core values and what they stand for, what is Mallory's superpower, and <clears throat> how can you um, learn from her focus on that and how she's going to develop more streams of income and revenue and live even a more um, full and uh, fulfilled life by focusing on her superpower. All that and more here on the podcast today. I am in the middle of just a uh, reflection of our year that we've lived through and focusing on amazing projects for the future. We are in the middle of a lot of business development ideas and opportunities. We're planning out the rest of our calendar year with the team. And we have a lot of really cool things coming up for you. Um, but before those things get launched over the next four to six to eight weeks, I am taking a couple weeks of me time right now. Last week I was uh, doing my spring break staycation and I posted some pictures on Facebook and Instagram um, showing you guys what I was up to. I got three days uh, on the ski slopes, three different resorts, two in Aspen and one at Sunlight, which is a smaller gem mountain resort in Colorado and got some time alone, got some time with my hubby to be, and got some time with the kids. And um, just 
disconnecting a little bit before the next big wave of business development. And I think that there's a lesson to be learned in that as well, which is that you can hopefully um, find some ways to disconnect. As we go into spring, it's kind of like a spring cleaning for the soul, if you will, uh, for me. And so before I dive into spring cleaning in the house, we just completed our bathroom and master suite renovation. So we're putting everything in to the new bedroom, bath and closet and decorating and making, just tricking it out. But before I dive into that, you know, I kind of like just sitting with it as an empty space. Um, and thinking about that metaphorically also for myself as kind of an empty vessel, trying to like reduce and pull things out that are no longer needed in a spiritual self-cleaning, if you will. Uh, at this time of year. I think it's really an important practice as we um, come out of our winter hibernation and the last 12 months of hibernation in our world due to the virus. So I just think that this is a really special time and I will invite you to do some um, deep reflection and some re- uh, starting anew of any spiritual practices that you've forgotten, that you've let go of, that you have been in crisis mode for so long that you kind of just said, I don't have time for that right now. And this is the time to pick those things back up, to remember why we live, to remember and love and feed our souls with things that we are interested in, new interests, bucket list items, new places that we can plan travel to, uh, new books and resources and fun things, and kind of just coming back around to a spring season of blossoming. And so that's where I'm at personally, and I just wanted to share that with you a little bit. So uh, yeah, these next couple of weeks, I'm going to be a little quiet, and then coming into mid to late April and really um, putting, putting everything in place to serve all of you in a higher way. So that is all coming up <clears throat> and more to be announced very, very soon with all the stuff that we have in store for you, uh, in this industry, in the early learning industry. So without any further ado, let's dive into episode 103 of Child Care Rockstar Radio featuring my friend Mallory. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 103 of Child Care Rockstar Radio. Glad to have everybody back. My guest today is the fantastic Mallory Malloy Co. Mallory, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am so great. I'm so thrilled to be talking to you today. Uh, where are you right now? I am in my office in Baltimore City, one of my favorite places to be. Now, is Baltimore City the same as Baltimore? Baltimore City is Baltimore City. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as Baltimore, but there's in Baltimore the city. County and there's Baltimore City. So. Got it. So you are in the thick of it in Baltimore, yeah. Maryland. That is fantastic. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your child care business. Well, I'm Mallory Malloy Cole, a visionary and CEO of the Inheritance Academy and Child Development Center, formerly known as Inheritance Child Care Center. We're located in Baltimore City, and we are licensed for 150 children. We're currently enrolled at 108 children, and we're rocking it out during this pandemic. Yeah, you're rocking and rolling. Uh, and you have one location? We do currently have one location. We actually purchased this location two years ago. We had three locations at one point. We had five locations at one point. Mm. And in 2019, we were able to purchase our current building where we brought everyone together. Awesome. Very, very good. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into the wonderful world of preschool and child care. So when I was 14 years old, I had my first summer youth employment opportunity 
at one of Brooklyn, New York's most sought out child care centers. And it was amazing. The staff, the director, I'll never forget her, um, Zadie Davis. Uh, and the it was just like state of the art. Um, everything that, you know, they the children were protected, the way they cared for the children, the way they supported the parents just spoke to me. And since I was 14, I knew that I wanted to own my own state-of-the-art child care center. So we're working wow. towards that. <laughs> That's a, that's a really early uh, and very clear, clarified vision for a 14 year old. That's awesome. And yeah. here you are. Yeah. I'm so, excited. Yeah. That is super cool. Um, what, how many employees do you have? What's your, tell us more about your team. We currently have a team of 24. Um, we have four, we have a management team of four and we have, 11 classrooms. And so we have a teacher and an aide in each classroom. Okay. Good. And do you have a kitchen? We do have a kitchen. <laughs> we actually, <laughs> we, the building that we have now, we actually gutted the entire space out and we built it to our liking. So we designed it and built it from, not from the ground up, but from an empty shell. So 10,000 square feet of awesomeness. Nice. <laughs> Including a beautiful office for you, it looks like. Yes, and it has a bathroom. <laughs> nice. I know. Like, <laughs> I love having my office here uh, and my bathroom with a shower, and I can come here and I can work right. out and shower if I need to. It's just nice. It's awesome. <laughs> right. When the children come in my office, they're like, why do you have a bathroom? You live here? I mean, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of, kind of. Yes, you could say that. Yeah. All the, all the comforts of home. Um, good. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about what life is like at home. Well, I'm a married mom of three children in less than two weeks. I'll have my daughter will be, ha my middle child will be having a birthday. So I'll be, ha I'll have an 11 year old, a 13 year old and a 14 year old. Mm. Once Kaylee turns 12, I can say 12, 13 and 14 again. It's so much easier when they're yeah. right there, but those are my spare step babies. We have uh, we have three dogs, have 12 godchildren, lots of nieces, nephews, cousins. I'm surrounded by children. Yeah. And dogs. <laughs> yes, and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Well, what is one thing, Mallory, that hardly anybody knows about you that you'd like to share? One thing that not too many people know is that I want achieve licensure on three centers in three weeks Whew. yeah so that was back in I think August of 2019 when we were having our sensor built and we had an expected finish date that did not happen so we had to make things happen and I was successful in getting three locations licensed in a little over three weeks wow Yep. That beats the prior record held by Danny Christine, uh, interviewed on the podcast a few episodes ago, and uh, way to go. So you're now the current record holder on speed of licensing. <laughs> awesome. Like That's awesome. The, the record holder. It's one of my yeah. favorite things to do. Yeah, that's good. So are you, I think you also, we can talk about your work that you're doing with other early childhood providers, but you're also helping people with getting licensed or just the process of like in more of a consulting capacity, or maybe that's something you want to pursue. Well, I am definitely, I've done it unofficially over the past 10 years since I opened my first location and I've been asked to assist others. But this year, I'm going to get more serious about my consultation services, which is going to be, uh, you know, assisting aspiring child care owners with locating and licensing their facility. Right. Because you have shared with me that working in the, um, the startup phase of finding the real estate or finding the location and, and that whole piece is really one of your superpowers. It's really what lights you up. Absolutely. So... Funny story, if I may. Yeah. Um, 10 years ago, when I decided that I wanted to open a child care center, I actually went to the orientation held in Baltimore City for new child care owners. And 
they tell you at the orientation, this is what you have to do. And if you don't do it within a year, you have to come back and have the orientation all over again. So I just knew for a fact that I would be coming back to have the orientation all over again because it was intense. Well, lo and behold, um, because real estate is my other passion, I can't stay off LoopNet, Cra Craigslist, Redfin. I'm always looking at property. And I actually found an apartment, uh, an apartment complex that was uh, advertising for office space that they were leasing out. So I called them and I said, hey, do you have any spaces that could accommodate childcare? And they said, we're actually looking to build a childcare center on our premises. So 10 years ago, that was how I started my first center, just calling around, and they ended up building me a brand new child care center. Now, that was completely brand new, everything. Um, and I didn't end up having to go back to the orientation because that was done in less than a year. So. Nice. Well, that's awesome. What I love about that story, Mallory, is that you are always looking for opportunities and you're reaching out to your community and picking up the phone, talking to people. And then, you know, people are always like, well, how come you magically made that happen in your lap? And it's like, well, I didn't. I actually just right. did the work. I picked up the phone. I talked to, you know, 10, 15 people to find the one opportunity or more. You might have to talk to 50 people. To, but I love that because if you're always looking at, you know, the, the real estate sites and looking for opportunities, you're going to be the person that's like the go-to that, you know, knows what, what's going on in the market. So I love right. that. Really good. Really smart. Um, so let's walk through everything you've done regarding enrollment. I want to um, talk a little bit about the journey that you've been through with covid this is being recorded and will be releasing in April of 2021. And so looking back on the last year, I'm oftentimes I'm reflecting um, where was I this time last year in my mindset and in our, in our, you know, place of uh, just the world and what we've lived through. So um, reflecting on that, you survived and now you're thriving again and you've come through it. So anything you want to share um, overall with regard to the journey that we've been on and or anything with regard to how you've retained and or grown your enrollment and come out of this so that you can be in a good position. Okay. So back in March of 2020, we were approved as an essential personnel site where we were only able to allow, to provide care for children of essential personnel. And with that, we maintained an enrollment of approximately 40 children. And to be honest, for a long time, we were comfortable staying at our 40 children. We had a lot of uh, staff who chose to be, you know, who chose not to return to work, understandably. So in all honesty, it's only, it has only been recently that we decided to start really building on enrollment. I think enrollment started to pick back up around November, December. Um, and now that, you know, it is picking up, we are putting systems in place and it is, there's a buzz out there about inheritance. I mean, there's always been a buzz, but um, we're almost fully enrolled again. So yeah. And that's at 150 children. But for most of the past year, it's been more so about safety and maintaining the children, you know, the environment, the safety of the environment that we have, the staff that we've had, and just, you know, taking great care of the children who were already enrolled. We paused mm -hmm. enrollment for a long time. So based on what you said and what I know about you, you have an outstanding reputation in Baltimore. Inheritance Child Care Center, Inheritance Academy, um, is known. And so you have kind of, I'll say, you know, added a lot of, um, brand awareness and P and reputation factors working on your reputation of your brand and have been over the last two or three years plus. And so yep. you've now gotten that flow where people know about you. They, love you. And so you went from 40 to 108 
um, from November to today, which is a huge growth in, in a very short amount of, of time. So, and then, and then driving towards 150. So what are some of the things that you've done that you do as a consistent practice around your brand awareness and brand reputation? I would say as a consistent practice, it's more so operating out of our core values. We have a very diverse um, enrollment. So our families come from all different walks of life. And I believe that our number one core value of support is known throughout the community, even though we may not always broadcast how we're supporting our families or our staff. I feel like knowing that that behavior is there, that that consistency is there, spreads, spreads like a silent, you know, message to the community. So we may not, you know, one family may not know what we're doing for another family, but they know that there was a time that we did something for them or, mm -hmm. you know, the same thing with our team. I believe that operating our core values is one of the biggest things that we've done. Um, and we're a pretty fun facility. We have, again, we have four, we have a leadership team of four and one of our directors, one of her responsibilities is making sure that there's an exciting event happening every month. And once we do that, like, everybody's, you know, <laughs> we're all over the place with what's happening at Inheritance. So what are some of the events that you have either done recently or that you have planned upcoming? Because I know people love um, to get ideas from about events and, and those kinds well, of things. Well, our most recent one was a Beauty and the Beast ball that we had. Um, and that was amazing. So our teachers decorated their classrooms. Again, one of our directors, she's, she's, very big on events and decorating. So she had the facility looking amazing. We um, She also did photos of each child, sent them home to the parents. We mm. also, uh, pre-COVID, we held a kitty prom annually. And that's one of our favorite events to do. Back in the day, we used to get limos for the children and drive them to the site, the graduates, drive them to the site of the kitty prom. Uh, last year, we did a love fest, which is a combination of loving everyone and Black History Month. Nice. So we'll, we'll, right now, our events are more so for the children on site who are mm -hmm. attending. But once COVID is clear, we'll get back to, you know, the community events. So I'm curious about Beauty and the Beast. Were the girls showing up as beauties and the boys c coming as beasts? They were. So they had their ball gowns and the boys had their bow ties and not necessarily Beauty and the Beast, but Belle and Bo. <laughs> Belle and Bo. Very nice. Very, very fun. And I'm sure you're you're posting that on social media and working your social media channels with pictures and such. I Absolutely. Assume. Yes. And that's fine. It's helping you with your following on Instagram and Facebook. Um are you doing regular email blasting to your families? I'm not. Okay. Okay. That's something that I definitely need to work on. Yeah. A lot we of do our email people. email blast, but they're yeah. not, you know, they're not scheduled and, and consistent. So. Right. Yeah. That's something that I think a lot of our team members uh, in the academy, our clients are working on and yourself in included. Um, and I did not mention the fact that Mallory also is, a recent upgrade to the empire level, which is our highest whoop, level whoop, whoop, of membership in the academy. Oh, I should have did a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I love having you in there. And I know that you're doing some amazing, you know, things in your program uh, because I hear about you from other people oh, and awesome. in the space. They're like, oh, Mallory's doing this and Mallory's doing that. So Nice. So follow her and check her out, everybody, because she has got it going on. I love these themes of these parties and these events. Super fun. And I can see why your parents, you know, are drawn to that because a lot of parents just they love that the whole dress up um, celebration component of parenting for little ones is so fun. That's that's Absolutely. one of the to me, the funnest things about having little kids is that my daughter started dance when she was three and every year she had her dance recitals and the whole yeah. hair and makeup and the whole thing. And, um, 
really, really fun and really great memories of, of all of that. So I love that you had the photos of each child and so just those, so all those personal connections. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you're rocking that. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, relationships. So through COVID and then just ongoing pre-COVID and then maybe now, like how have things changed for you with regards to relationships with staff, parents, community? How have you kept that tight? How have you kind of kept that loyalty fence in place during this very stressful time? Um, and what are some things that you're doing to really stand apart in your community other than events, which I know it sounds like events is one as a big thing for you. So there was one point in time where I was parent focused, like everything was parent, 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 parent. And it took for me to grow and learn that your team is what's driving your business. So I believe that going back to our core values with the number one being support, education, empowerment, and dedication. In recent years, I've learned to trust more and allow my leadership team to have more of an ownership or responsibility and inheritance. And I feel like that has that in itself has taken us far. So while I'm, you know, still working on growing as a leader, I'm also pouring into my leadership team who is the driving force of Inheritance Academy. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my leaders actually has been attending the mastermind meetings for the Academy. And she's like, head over heels, excited about, you know, what she's learning and just excited to grow. And so my leadership team has been spending more time with my teaching team and they've been doing incorporating more one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, more activities and events, even um, staff-wide. The communication with parents has got, gotten a lot better. We have, again, one director who's one of her responsibilities is making sure that she re remains in close contact with new families old families and just making sure that communication is clear across the board. So I, I mm -hmm. feel like that's one of the biggest things that we've done. Um, yeah, I love that. So I see behind you, cause you mentioned your core values, support, education, yeah. empowerment, and dedication, hashtag seed. Yes. Love that. <laughs> so that's your, that's your acronym, which is your core values driven platform. I mean, really yeah. you're setting your culture up right there. Uh, and, and driving it home every day. So I love that. Yes, I feel like things have definitely improved at inheritance since we incorporated our core values. It makes it easier for everyone to understand and know what we stand for. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think being a values-driven organization is a huge game changer and you're proof in the pudding of that. And the other thing, and you because you've been in the Academy a while and I think that the other thing that's really driven the academy to the next level is that we have started really focusing on team like we we always had a team program but it was like we didn't really flow a lot of love in there it was more so like an owners it was seen as you know well this is for the owners this isn't and yeah. so we've really shifted that with the understanding that the more we can develop leaders and even develop teachers into leaders and help give you guys more tracks and more um professional development tools that you can continue to feed into your team at all levels, that's going to help take more off of your plate as an owner. And it also just makes a more vibrant, better academy. And then our true mission is to impact the children. So the way to really impact the children is through the teachers and the leaders, not so much the, the owners as well, because it has to, culture starts from the top and you're a perfect embodiment of that. But I feel like that's really shifted in our journey as, yeah, as academy coaches is really realizing that we needed to broaden that out. So I'm so happy to hear that your, your, you know, your, your, your leader and leaders are really responded to and excited about uh, being in the academy with us. Yes, we have, <laughs> we're working on the rest of our leadership team becoming more involved. But again, my one director is through the roof excited about her membership in the academy. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. And I love your core values and your values focus. That's a huge component really of your marketing. 
because everybody that sees this podcast on our YouTube channel, which will be potentially thousands of people, will you know will know you and Inheritance Academy and Baltimore and hashtag Seed and all of those things will flow out into the world at large. So um, I love it. It's really amazing. Thank you. Um, let's talk about back to the real estate component, the, your superpower, the thing that you love doing the most in business and career. And then how are you developing that love into new lines of consulting or new income streams for yourself? Well, I haven't necessarily launched a project that I'm working on, but I do have something in the works. It's called the Academy Builder. Because this, again, this academy that we built two years ago is a testament of what can be done. I definitely want to continue to inspire uh, child, aspiring child care owners to follow their dreams and encourage people that it can be done. Not necessarily just in child care. Um, I have a friend who's in the process of getting her a beauty salon license, but I feel like if I have the information and I can share it with others, then and that's what I love to do, then I'm going to create a separate platform where I can do that because that that's what I love to do. So I'm working on it. And I plan on launching it in June around okay. my birthday. The Academy Builder, and you're going to be helping um, business startups or people that want to expand. Yep. Find the real estate. Uh, and are you going to help with both like lease negotiation as well as buying type, you know, uh, platforms or just one or the other? Not initially. I've okay. got some more learning and, you know, researching and talking to Tamina to do <laughs> <laughs> before I get there. Um, but locating and, you know, inspecting and uh -huh. planning is licensing more... if needed all those kinds of components right okay cool love that uh mallory what is the biggest business challenge that you face that you had to overcome i would say the biggest challenge was losing so many of my awesome employees to covid we have operated for so long with a team that was majority long term staff uh, team members who have been here for four years or more. And when COVID came, we lost about seven of those team members. Um, so it almost feels like starting over. And I would say that was the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily that you can't get awesome staff again, but going through the process of having to find them, train them, trust them is difficult. But we're, we're getting there. We're almost fully staffed again, but mm -hmm. again, the process of training and making sure that everyone understands how we operate is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest challenges that people are facing right now <clears throat> in our industry and in any industry where um, we need to attract workers that aren't, you know, they're not highly compensated. They're, they're low to mid, mid range compensated. How do you hire on board and train and how have you maybe have, how have you changed how you're doing that to make it more successful for you after, t after learning some of the things you've learned from me and from us or other Academy members. Uh, so talk a little bit about that, you know, your training, how do you train? How do you onboard? Um, just maybe some few, some few highlights for things that you could share that people might gain from. So one of the one of the biggest things that we do is allow the new hire or potential hire to observe videos of our previous trainings, also videos of academy meetings uh, that we've either attended or have access to. Um, and I mean, hiring more so not on skill, but on what pers what their personality seems to be. And being willing to train is one of the biggest things that, you know, we've had to learn to do recently. And, and that works because you can have the most blossoming personality and they may have never worked in childcare before, mm -hmm. but with the right, you know, tools and training in place, 
they can become one of the best early childhood educators in the industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you have um, like an onboarding process where you kind of try to get them really immersed in your core values? Like how do you really make sure that they understand this, you know, hashtag seed that those components? We do. We initially, we don't, we have a process, but we don't have, we share our core values with them in the beginning. Um, They understand the mission and vision of the company. Mm -hmm. So it's more so sharing the history of the company with them. And I feel like that has spoken to a lot of our new hires. We don't have like a really intense training on support, education, empowerment, and dedication. But through, you know, our performance and the things that we do share with them, I believe that they, you know, get a great sense of what we're expecting from them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I do think that the willing to train component is um, important. That is one trend that we're seeing that a lot of our members have been sharing lately that when they put even willing to train in CAFs in the job title on Indeed, it does attract people who do want a new fresh start, maybe in a new industry. And I do think also looking for people that are wanting to make an impact because millennials and Gen Z's want to make an impact on the world. They're, they're mission driven, purpose driven individuals, many, many. And so versus paycheck driven. Um, So I think if you can, lead with the fact that they get to make a difference in the world with children is, is huge too. Um, so I love that willing to train component and hiring on personality. That's really, really cool. We've recently incorporated Ron Clark, move your bus. Mm -hmm. My director, Ms. Sharita is really big on encouraging everyone to be a runner. So we're, we, we love that move your bus and we're working, you know, with our team on becoming runners. Right. <clears throat> and somebody recently shared with me, oh, it was Joy in our group, Joy Clore Willis from Florida, that she is using a short Ron Clark video from YouTube. She said it was a seven or 11 minute video that Same she's using. using. Yeah. So we'll have to, let's see if we can get a link to that and put it in the show notes because yeah. I would love to share that with everybody and, and also sit down and watch it <clears throat> myself. Um, so... The question of the day is, how do you define a child care rock star? Hmm. So I would say that a child care rock star is anyone in the industry, whether they're a teacher, coach, janitor, anyone that is leading with passion and utilizing their passion to empower others, whether it be children or other adults. I would consider them a child care rock star. Love that answer. Love that answer. One of our core values at our company is passion. So that's a big deal for me. And I love that. And I love empowerment as well of, of a, of a school, an empowered culture. So people can um, have the tools and the confidence to make decisions in the workplace and not feel like they have to go um, get permission. You know, they can start feeling like a leader in the inside themselves. So I love that. Really, really great. Uh, What are some podcasts, resources, or books? If you want to just focus on books, that's cool. Or whatever you want to share that you love that you, you know, either ECE related or non that you would like to share with the audience. Well, I absolutely love my John Maxwell Leadership Bible. It mm, is you have the Bible. I, I love have the Bible. Bible. <laughs> I do. I love my Leadership Bible. It's like God is speaking directly to me. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And I love all things uh, John Maxwell. Uh-huh. Um, also, I love to listen to T.D. Jakes. Um, leadership sermons. They move me in a special way. Mm -hmm. And on a lower scale, I find myself always referring to a Facebook group, such as the academy groups or um, the local uh, 
group that one of my mentors created for child care directors in Maryland to find, you know, information. If I need to know something at the, you know, moment, I know where to find it. Mm-hmm. And the academy groups usually help me a lot with that. I've never asked you this specifically, Mallory, and I didn't put this on our Q&A, but I'm just curious, what is your favorite part of being in the academy? You've been in it, I think, four, four, four or five years. Uh, <clears throat> what, what do you love about it and why do you stay? I love the fact that there are so many different places to get information from, um, diverse perspectives, the people, the mm-hmm. tribe, and only recently I've learned to appreciate it as that, as a tribe. I feel like over the years I've been in the academy and I didn't take advantage of everything that it entails. Um, but this year I'm like, we're going to get this, we're going to get that. And I really, I, like, I actually know my pod members now, like, and I love them. We're a team. Um, but I've never, you know, I've never communicated with my pod members outside of the pod previously. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's a, a an amazing resource and I'm excited to be yeah. in the Empire level. <laughs> yes. I love having you in there. And I hope that you can come and be with me live in August here in Colorado. I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to put you on the spot for that, honey. I'll definitely see you at the end of this month. Well, the yeah. end of next month in Texas. But yeah. We're going on. to Austin at the end of April and we're very excited. We're doing a Wild West theme. Um, some people are going to be saloon girls. Some people are going to be Wild West girls and some people are going to be cowboys and it's going to, and, and whatever it, it, it's all, it's all good. And, uh, but I, you know, but we will play a variety of music at that party, not just country. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, we'll be playing some hip hop. We'll be we'll be in our Western outfits dancing to hip hop for sure. I'm okay. Know. I'm ready. Tamina's all about Cardi B, and I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> we got to keep it at least a little bit clean, you know. So maybe we'll get the clean well, version. I can't tell you my favorite rappers. <laughs> you can't. I mean, you can't I mean, share I can, it. I can tell you Biggie is one of them, but the rest of them. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good. We're going to have a good time <clears throat> in Austin. I'm so excited. We've never held an, an, um, a meeting, an academy meeting in Austin, and I'm very, very excited to go there. I've never actually been to downtown Austin myself, so I'm hoping that there might be some live music on a limited scale that we can attend and, you know, be in a, you know, a safe but fun environment, finally hearing some live music, because that's really what Austin's known for. It's funny you mentioned the music because if I, I kept it clean, but when you asked what's the fun fact about you that no one knows, I wanted yeah. to say I absolutely love rap music and no, <laughs> <laughs> on a different level. Like. Right. <clears throat> well, that's cool. I love it. That's, that's cool. I, I was a rap music aficionado back in the day because I was a child of the 80s. And so all the early stuff, like the LL Cool J and Run DMC, like that's more of my, that's my jam right there. Oh, but anyway. cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, how can people reach you if they want to connect and find you or follow you? Uh, well, I'm Mallory Malloy Cole on Facebook and Inheritance Academy on Instagram and soon okay. to be the Academy Builder on Instagram as well. And what is your website address? www.inheritanceacademy.org. Awesome. Easy enough. Very cool. Well, Mallory Malloy Co., this has been a really fun episode and just a fun conversation with you. I love um, your values driven approach, I love the seed core value uh, platform. It's super cool, easy to remember, and powerful. Um, I love what you did to survive through COVID and now you've grown and now you're getting close to fully enrolled again and your brand reputation is <clears throat> top notch. Um, I love your diversity and clientele and your parties, all your themes and your parties are <laughs> events. Super fun. I love it. Thank I would love you. to come for a kitty prom and actually be there in person to experience it. 
Oh, we're going to send you an invitation. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do. I can't wait to uh, do some traveling. Maybe I'll come visit you and Tamina and uh, all of our other Maryland friends. Yep. <clears throat> and um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Take care and have a great day, everybody. Thanks again, Mallory and all the team at Inheritance Academy. You guys are doing amazing things. Um, we'll see you all next time. All righty. Thanks, Chris. Ciao for now. Thank you. See you later. Okay, bye.